And good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Friday on this day, a beautiful day out. I'm going to tell you about all the weather in just a moment. On our show today, we have Juanita Skillman. And she is the president of the United Board. They had their meeting this week, and she's going to give us a recap of that meeting. Also, Dana Oweiler will be here from Sterling Financial Advisors, and our subject is taxes. What's the difference between a tax exemption and tax credit, a tax deduction, and how that plays out and your favor when you are ready to pay, right? And I'm about ready to pay today, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Fran Williams here from the African American Club. They're going to be having an event coming up. And also uh, Chris Ramirez from the Christian, Christian Women's Connection. They're having a meeting coming up as well. Now, uh, there are no meetings today, so we can talk to you about the beautiful weather. Remember, early in the week, we we're looking at a chance of rain today. There's not even clouds in the sky in this area, so it's going to be very nice today. Really uh, pretty much crystal clear. Maybe a little bit of clouds as we get to this evening, but going forward, we're just going to be in the mid-70s all the way through. Now, as we get to um, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have the morning clouds, a few scattered clouds, and, uh, but still mostly sunny, but you'll notice a drop in temperature. However, when we get into middle of next week, we are looking another round of offshore Santa Ana winds, possibly even a little bit stronger than what we just had. We had some very mild ones. So next week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, right now, we're looking at uh, um, really going up as far as the winds and the temperatures. But that's till next week. We'll see what happens. But for us, just absolutely beautiful spring weather over the next several days and really into next week. Here we are uh, everywhere you go around the state. You are going to see mostly sunny skies. Uh, some of the areas will have a few scattered uh, clouds uh, here and there, but not that bad at all. Look at this, just absolutely uh, beautiful. Now, up in uh, Big Bear today, um, I put partly cloudy because there's actually a chance for them. There is still a little system coming in where there could be a little bit of rain up there or even a slight dusting of snow overnight. Uh, it shouldn't be much at all, but everywhere else, beautiful. Uh, Palm Springs, 89, gorgeous. San Diego, 76. And even if you're going up to the central coast in the Bay Area and all, uh, really nice. Uh, 67 in the Bay Area this time of the year. This is their uh, beautiful springtime weather. That's what it normally is. So anywhere you go, it's going to be great. Just a reminder that if you are planning to take a flight somewhere, particularly the Midwest and back east, they're still having a lot of problems with blizzard conditions back there. So make sure you check there. There you go. Go out and uh, play a little, uh, is that paddle tennis or pickleball? I don't know the difference between the two, but it looks like paddle tennis to me. But either way, go out and enjoy the activities. lies inside all of us is more than data. It's life. What's flowing through America's veins is its diversity. We ask for one million individuals to come forward and stand on this landmark in history. All of us are different, and it's those very differences that will lead to answers for generations to come. It's Easter. Diane's Hallmark can help you with everything you need for the season. From cards and plush toys for the grandkids, as well as cards and accessories, Diane's Hallmark can help you make this Easter a special time for everyone. Remember, Diane's Hallmark has a large selection of Christian books and gifts as well. Come in today and see what's new. Diane's Hallmark is located in the Walmart Shopping Center next to Hobby Lobby. I choose to let someone else do the cooking. I choose to let someone else do the driving. 
chance to experience the good life at Villa Valencia in Laguna Hills. Call or visit us today. At South County Lexus, we really are different. We're California's exclusive Lexus Plus dealer. Lexus Plus is a new way of doing business. At a Lexus Plus dealer, you can expect an upfront, negotiation-free, hassle-free price right on the vehicle. The same price you'll find on our website all the way through the transaction. South County Lexus, we feel this is the way of the future and this is the way the customer prefers to do business. South County Lexus, your exclusive Lexus Plus dealer. Different, just like you. I'm Wendy Miller, your Smiley Realtor with Remax and your Laguna Woods Real Estate Specialist. I'm here today with the first of my seven home selling tips for seniors. Some seniors prefer to rely on the real estate agent who has sold the most properties in their neighborhood. Others seek the most often recommended from family and friends. The right professional will ask questions about your future goals. He or she will help you decide upon a realistic listing price and answer all of your questions promptly before asking you to sign a listing agreement. Give me a call and I will help you make the right move. And with me today is Juanita Skillman. She is the board president of United. They have their regular monthly meeting on Tuesday. Welcome, good to have you here today. Thank you. And we did very well. We were just a little over three hours, uh, yeah, two yeah. and a half hours. Right. We uh, got out at 11 minutes after 12, which for us has been very, very good because we've been having yeah, very long really meetings. Yeah, it's really good, yes. So um, basically at the meeting, the big, um, topic that we were talking about was guarantors right. and whether we should bring back guarantors um, for people who cannot financially qualify. And there's, there's a lot of misinformation, people thinking guarantors are like our payment plans. If you get behind, you can get a guarantor mm -hmm. to help you, that kind of thing, and that's not true. It's when you first apply to be a shareholder, if you don't have the full financial qualifications, a guarantor can say it's like co-signing a loan yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, it there are certain rules and regulations you can only do one and it has to be within California your assets uh, and the guarantor themselves has to have quite a bit of, of mm -hmm. assets and wages so it didn't pass <laughs> but uh, it's going back to committee and they're looking at uh, some of the suggestions that were brought up in the meeting and things that people either didn't like or wanted to see on it so I expect we probably will see it back on our May or June meetings okay. um, again. All right. <laughs> so and it seemed we'll like see. the biggest one was, uh, in fact a lot of people on the board were saying why do they need to have it in California? Yes. Because it, you, right. somebody, a couple of people kind of up and said you know what a lot of um, our, our kids or whoever mm -hmm. it may be they live mm -hmm. in other states they don't want to sit there and open a special account or something right. in California. The problem that we have, though, is collecting, if we need to, from the guarantors that are out of state. We don't have I never say the word right. Repressicity mm -hmm. with uh, other states in some kind of cases, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's been a while. But we have had to write off some fairly large amounts because we couldn't collect mm -hmm. from the person. And, and also, you guarantee, and five years later, maybe that guarantor has passed away. And then what do we do? Right. <laughs> so there are all these things that we need to look at. And Cal being in California is just one of them. And you're right, that was one of the big issues. Right. So the Governing Documents Committee will be looking at that to okay. see what we can do. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, uh, I know you've had a lot of people who have talked about the gate issues, mm -hmm. and we just opened gate two, and we've got gate one, uh, gate three closed down now while they do right. it. And the, the issue is RFIDs. Mm -hmm. First of all, people, when it was just five and six, didn't get an RFID. And now they're streaming into the office downstairs right. and getting them but they have to pay $25, which isn't that much, but they resent having mm -hmm. to pay extra for it. 
And there's also the confusion. I've had quite a few people who have said, I have my decal. It's on my, windsh on my window, my windshield. That's your decal that lets you live in the village or keep right. a car in the village. It is not an RFID. That goes on your headlight, and mm -hmm. it's a completely separate thing. So right. when people say, I try to get through the gates, and I have my decal, and it won't let me through, that's why. Right. <laughs> it's apples and oranges. So we, now, you know, people did mention, as you said, paying the $25, someone suggested, well, at least when someone first buys into the mm -hmm. village, they should be able to get one automatically. But of course, this is, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, that's more of a GRF issue. It is, it yeah. is, but, it, it, and it's, but it's definitely a cost, and, and uh, people moving into United say, we pay the facilities fee, mm -hmm. it should be included, but then there's, is it included when you sign your escrow? If you buy a car six months later? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's so many different things that they right. just said it's not gonna be covered anymore. Okay. Uh, I'm really, really pleased to announce that at our landscape meeting on Wednesday, um, we got the results of the survey that the landscape department had been doing and what a wonderful job they did this mm -hmm. time. Uh, and we do have a new uh, herbicide right. that we probably will be putting in. It has to go to our board in May right. to be approved, and, but it's only going to be an extra $15,000 in the landscape budget for the year instead okay. of the huge cost per man or per month that we were looking at okay. with our previous study. And um, I have to say that Kurt Wyman and his group just were meticulous and they brought in an outside consultant to verify what they were doing so that people didn't think we were mm -hmm. fudging anything and uh, the results in the PowerPoint that he presented which probably will be presented on TV6 at some time right were really really good so we are very happy to okay have that well we'll wait for <laughs> Kurt to come on and then we can go over yeah. a little more in detail the ins right. and outs he wanted to present it to the boards use. first so we got yeah. ours this week I believe uh, thirds uh, landscape meeting is next week and then we'll, okay we'll go more public with it but we did want to announce now, the results. let me ask you I don't know if you can answer this or not uh, are the boards working together to have one cohesive Absolutely. plan? That way the poor landscapers don't think, Absolutely. we can spray with this over here, but not with that over there. Yes, and that's what we need to do, because we okay. only have one landscape department right. for the whole village, and yeah. they cover all of the different, both mutuals and GRF. Mm -hmm. So we all need to work together, and that's what we're, we're doing. Right. And we think this survey uh, study that they did will be passed by all of the boards and then okay. will be all in sync. All right, very working. good. Uh, <clears throat> we had a couple of things that were introduced for first reading that we'll have to come back at our May meeting for a final vote. Uh, one of them was a revision to the golf cart charging violation fees mm -hmm. because we still have a lot of people who try to fudge and right. not pay the charging fee for mm -hmm. their electric cars thinking, oh, nobody will know it's in my carport. I'll just plug it in and they won't understand. Um, and security's being pretty good about checking on right. those, et cetera. And so, the, but we raised the violation from a $50 to a $100 mm -hmm. fee if you are caught. So don't do it. Yes. <laughs> Come in and get your sticker and, and do it legally. Um, and then we also introduced a couple of things to our financial qualification policy. And should the guarantors come back and be passed, that's going to have to change our qual financial qualification policy as right. well. But right now we're looking at community property and uh, rental assets and things like that. So that one will okay. be Okay, and let's on. mention during the meeting there was a bit of confusion <clears throat> um, because the final vote was whatever it was, but it was no. Four yeah. in favor and, and seven were, against. And uh, some of the people on the board were going, well, doesn't this go back to committee? And as you said, well, you know what? Nobody brought that up. They didn't. So technically, you just voted no. Right. And it could have been that some of them were voting no, thinking, I don't like a certain part of this. Exactly. But they. Right. But at that point, Robert's rules and everything else, somebody needs to make a motion <laughs> saying to table this, 
or to send it back to committee. Right, then exactly. That and they the didn't, process. but we will send yeah. it back to committee. Right, right. So the Governing Documents confusing. Committee will definitely okay. be looking at it. It may take a little bit more time, and so it may come to our June meeting instead of our May meeting because uh, we have all of these deadlines that has to be this right. far in advance and whatever. And the Governing Docs Committee is the last okay. of the month. But there so. was that. Procedural yeah, issue. exactly. See what I've learned from Joan Milliman. Very good. I appreciate from the that. the Roberts rules. Well, there of course you go. we Thank have. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> we have uh, Anthony Libatori on our yes, board, right. who is also part of, that too. Yeah. part of that, and he he helps us with that. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to go over particularly one little thing that has been kind of brought to the forefront, and we have, and we have since um, January of uh, 2017 a non-smoking policy in United. Mm -hmm. And there's been some confusion with people who look at the city ordinance, right. which is you can smoke within 20 feet of a public building. Mm -hmm. But ours is much more restrictive than that. And so if you live in the village in United, you can only smoke in your unit with the doors and the windows closed. You cannot right. smoke on balconies. You cannot smoke on patios, even if they're larger than 20 feet. Uh, you mm -hmm. cannot smoke in carports, breezeways, stairwells, okay. all of those things. And uh, yes, it's more restrictive than the general policy that the city has that says uh, you can smoke 20 feet from a public building. Right. But you right. live in United. We have our own rules. And yes, some of them are more restrictive. Because we have a lot of, of uh, our senior citizens who are allergic to smoke, mm -hmm. who have lung problems, who have there, and we, we try to take care of those. So uh, it, it has reared its ugly head again. Yeah. And I just wanted to reiterate that the United policy take uh, precedent right. over the city general public places policy. All right. So, and that's, of course, true anywhere. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But people quote that to us all the time. But the city says yes. <laughs> that they're. All right. Very so, good. Um, anyway, we'll try to keep our meetings down again next week, uh, next month. And uh, we don't have a lot of things going on. Uh, right now, we're getting ready for elections, and mm -hmm. I encourage anybody who's interested in the governance of our community to look at uh, within, I think, June is when you start nom uh, uh, applying, right. putting in your nomination for this fall's election. So please consider it. All right. Very good. Good to good see to you. Good to see you. Take care. Thank you. And we'll be right back. How many people? Welcome back. I'm Kiana Lee. Today we're talking to Dr. Chuck Lee of Seven Day Dental. Today's topic is emergency dental care. Doctor, what do we need to know about emergency dental care? At Seven Day Dental, we are open seven days a week, 365 days a year for your dental needs. Thank you, doctor. So come on in and get your Seven Day Dental smile. As a professional licensed realtor, you have worked countless hours to ensure your reputation is the best. Your clients know they can trust your judgment, that you'll be around when they need you, and that you will deliver what you promise. In escrow, one company has set that same standard for excellence. Escrow Options Group offers more than just outstanding escrow services, white glove concierge services, wire and fraud protection, custom estimates, and more at no extra charge. Choose the company that mirrors your professionalism. Escrow Options Group. Experience a better option of escrow. Services. Having great home care is as easy as one, two, three. I'm Lori Renaud with ActiCare Responsive In-Home Care. We can provide the perfect caregiver for you to receive exceptional care in the comfort of your home. Step one, call to schedule a care consultation. Step two, meet with a registered nurse in your home. Step three, start receiving care. Aging doesn't have to be difficult. Call today to get the help you deserve. You've trusted the doctors at Harvard Eye Associates with your eyes for the last four decades. Now it's time to trust us with your face. 
Our board-certified surgeons and aesthetic nurse offer the latest in facial aesthetic treatments, such as Botox, dermal fillers, laser skin rejuvenation, eyelid surgery, and face and neck lip surgery. Call us today to schedule your complimentary cosmetic consultation. 949-951-2020. Ask about our limited time savings on Botox and dermal fillers. I started Sterling Financial under the premise that there was a need for integrity in this industry as well as quality service. There's such volatility in the stock market. They, you know, one day it could be up 100 points, the next day it could be down 500 points. Well, what we like to do is be able to have people go to bed and wake up the next morning knowing that their money is safe and secure. That's what we try to do here at Sterling Financial Advisors is to create peace of mind and quality of life in retirement. Well, our good buddy Dan Oweiler is here today from Sterling Financial Advisors. And How are welcome you, back. Yeah, I was uh, able to get away for a couple of weeks. We were over in Hawaii. And so Very good. the bad thing about going to Hawaii is if you, that you have to come home. You have to come back. That's right. <laughs> yes, where'd you, where'd you stay? We were on the big island. We enjoy, uh, my wife and I enjoy snorkeling quite a bit. And out of wow. all the islands the big island usually has the best snorkeling so a lot of fun we you know it's been a hectic we or a hectic month for us uh i think uh maybe the last time i was in i don't know but my father passed right, away right a little over a month ago but all is good he was 95 yeah. and it was time for him to go yeah uh, about two weeks later i had a wedding my yes, son got right met it, and then we went to hawaii so it's been kind of a hectic month uh, uh, in the Oweiler family, so, but all was good, and we yeah, had, a, it was nice great. to get away and, and relax for a little bit. Right, so. yeah, well, glad to have you back. Now, yeah. unfortunately, we're not talking about a favorite subject, <laughs> but a necessary one. And all the market's up today. Uh, yeah, the market's up. I yeah. mean, there was some good yeah. uh, uh, quarterly reports out, and I think the market is 26.3 today, and yeah. we're about 500 points from an all-time high. Yeah. You know, so, the last quarter of last year was kind of pinched us a little bit, but since the beginning of the year, it's kind of bounced back, and, right. and we're having a good year this year. So, you know, we're we're still doing okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Well, I can think of probably a few companies that have just <laughs> shot up quite a bit. One of them I'm a big fan of, so I can imagine. All right. Uh, this. Yeah, I think this is not not a favorite subject for everybody. No. No. Uh, but I like this because I think we all get confused by this. The mm. difference between tax exemptions, tax deductions, and tax credits. Right. And, uh, you know, I went through this when we were doing our taxes, as I just well, told Well, I thought, you, you know, we're getting to yeah. the deadline. And yeah. The, and most people have probably already done it, but I thought it would be good just to review this. I think with, it's very good. With people. But uh, uh, an exemption is... Basically, you're exempting uh, taxable income. Right. Okay, so things like uh, IRA contributions, 401k contributions, those are exempted mm -hmm. income to you. Right. And then we get the standard exemptions mm -hmm. that right. the tax code, 12,500. Deductions are deducted for, well, exemptions and deductions are what we call above the line Right. This and year, it yeah. reduces our taxable income. Yeah. Tax credits reduce our tax. Right. So a credit is always better than a deduction right. or an exemption. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So things like uh, exemptions are municipal bond interest. Mm -hmm. That's exempt from federal tax. Um, alimony, th those types of things. Okay. Okay. Those are exemptions. Deductions is what we are mortgage interest, uh, mm -hmm. charitable contributions, those types of things are deducted from our taxable income, where exemptions, we're not even including them in our taxable income. Okay, now when, okay. You, when you do deductions, let me ask you um, the confusion about that, because I, I often don't know. Let's say I gave $10,000 to a charity. Is it dollar for dollar? On a, generally on, on contributions it is. Okay. okay. Where we got into, you know, people being upset last year is they 
uh, the, with the tax law change, right. we have limitations on our state yes. deductions. Yes. We used to be able to write off 100% of our uh, state uh, mm -hmm. uh, property tax, 100% right. of our state income tax. Now that's limited to $10,000. Yes. Okay, so our property tax, state income tax has a limit of $10,000. So where, where we yeah. might have, in here in California, big high tax or high real estate tax states, mm -hmm. you know, you could have, you know, six, seven thousand, eight thousand dollars in property tax. Right, right. And then your income tax on top of that is limited to two thousand right. dollars. So and also your interest that you pay on your mortgage is is limited, right? The, your mortgage is limited to seven hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars. Anything over seven hundred and fifty thousand that interest is not okay. You're not right. allowed to deduct that. Yeah. So those are all what we call deductions. Mm -hmm. you, you you exempt certain uh, income, municipal mm -hmm. bond income or alimony or whatever it is, and then you deduct from that these limited deductions that we right. can. Once we come up with our taxable income, they say, okay, here's your tax that is owed. Yeah. Then that's where the credit comes in, mm -hmm. and so, you know, earned income credit or you know whatever it is, uh, solar credit or whatever, it actually offsets yes. the taxes that you have to pay. Okay. So a tax credit is always better than exemption and a deduction. Right, and uh, you know this year, as I was saying, for us, one of the biggest things we did not do and didn't realize is our uh, paychecks to um, go from, we both had the, the one exemption, credit, exemption right. to go to zero. Right. And that was the difference. Yeah, so uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, people were getting uh, more in their paycheck, right? but they didn't withhold as, uh, the, enough to cover yes. the tax at the end of the year. Yes. So they say, well, I have to pay more. I, 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 I don't get me started, but a lot of news organizations say people are paying more in tax. Well, you paid more, but you got more right. throughout the year. Right. So it's not really. In fact, my our, our an accountant showed me that they go here is the difference. Right. This is about how much more you guys took in this year in your paycheck. Guess what? That's now alluding to almost dollar for dollar what you have to pay. Right. Right. Today or or Monday. Um, so in a sense, it balances out. Right. You know, and so. A lot of the news organizations say people are paying right. more. You know, if you're not in favor of the Trump tax right. breaks, they're arguing that people are paying more in tax returns or they didn't get as much right. tax returns. Well, they're not taking into account all the increased right. income they got throughout right. the year. As he told us, really the people that have done quite well are people in more of the Midwest states where their, their mortgages are a lot lesser, their right. state taxes are a lot lower. So those people are seeing, got more in their paycheck, plus they may be getting more back. Or well, I have to laugh yeah. because Governor Cuomo in New York right. is upset because a lot of rich people are moving out. Right. Be, and he says, we depend on rich people for our taxes. Right. You know, and uh, he says he's upset with the Trump tax breaks yeah. because you know New York is a high tax state right, like right. California is yes. and a lot of people are moving out and he's upset that people are moving out right well lower your taxes and they won't move out right you know right. and so but this uh, this is really good information and it's something I think that um, basically to help people out throughout the year just yeah. so, now of course a lot of people here um, you know they, they don't do, get into they some probably of get into the standard deductions yeah, yeah. they're not they're not itemizing as much right, uh, right. the older we get. Uh, and so uh, they're usually just taking the standard deductions where you have larger contributions or things like that where your mortgages are right. higher and taking advantage of that, you're gonna get in the deduction. But most of the time is my mom, mm -hmm. you know, is 94 years old. She just takes the standard deduction and yeah. you know, everybody's happy, right, you know? Right. So, uh, but for those of us that are still working and have some other expenses, we may take advantage of that. And this is something that I know you folks can help out with because now's the time to be 
looking ahead to next year. Right, right. Uh, you know, as my tax person said, you know, let's get your your deduction down to zero on, right, right. on your uh, your paycheck. And then as we get into August and September, call me, let's sit down and see where you're at. Well, it was interesting, yeah. interesting. Um, one of my sons that works with me, okay, same thing happened to him. Yeah. He should have lowered his, Right. he was taking a high exemption. Yes. So, yeah. you know, and he forgot to change it last yes. year. Yeah. And he had to come up with some money at the end of the year because right. yeah. he hadn't lowered it. On the other hand, my son who just got married increased his exemption because he now has two people. Yeah. yeah. You know, so they, they were in totally different scenarios in their yeah. tax planning this year. Well, it's good to, um, you know, it is what it is. It is. Yeah. And overall, so, I, I'm going to say overall, it was like your experience. Right. The majority of people have, is a push. They just see the big lump sum at the end of the year. It's not right. as high or I had to pay some. Right. But they don't take into account their increased uh, paycheck throughout the year. Right. You know, so overall, you know, the, the banter going on is the rich people got better and the mm -hmm. poor people got hit. Yeah, that's not really true. Right. You know, it's it was probably equally spread out across the board. Yeah. But you got to you got to plan one way or another. You do. All right. Good to see you. Good to Welcome see you. back. Glad Thanks to see to you again. Uh, and um, um, snorkeling sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, we have a good time. Yeah, uh, we we almost do it every day. We've yeah. got about five or six places we go to, and the things you see are amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've done that once over there. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Good to see you. If you want to get a hold of Dan, you can. The website is sterlingfa.com, and uh, from there, uh, you can get all kinds of information and call them up at 859-8900. No just, cost just to come no in and cost. chat. Yeah, and it, it's a good way to start and just right. see where you're at. Yeah, it really is. Good to see you. Good you to see care. you again. We'll do that. It's important for you to get your financial house in order. And so it breaks my heart sometimes when I see widows that come in with a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to their name, and yet their broker has lost two or three hundred thousand dollars in the market when they shouldn't even have been in the market. The most satisfying part that I find in working with retirees is when they come in on their annual reviews and the market has had a, a bad turn, and we know that we can sit down and look at them and say, you haven't lost any money. It's never too late to improve your health with exercise. Challenge yourself to get moving in the morning. Hi, I'm Susan Tuttle. I'd like to encourage you to tune in to Channel 6 each weekday mornings at 7.55. 30 minutes of daily exercise will add years to your life. What are you waiting for? Come join me. Welcome back with me today from the African American Heritage Club is Fran Williams. It's great to have you back. 
Welcome. Thank you. Always thank good you, to see you. Thank you. you. And uh, you're going to be talking about an event coming up that has to do with uh, the library and some authors and literature and just some uh, great exactly, events. Exactly, exactly. We're celebrating and doing a tribute to African American writers, men and women writers of every genre. And we're doing this in concert with the Orange County Library System. So on the 20th, we will have set up like an old-fashioned coffee house, complete oh, with be fun. coffee and wine and little appetizers, yeah. readings of poetry, readings, excerpts from favorite books and screenplays and children's books. We'll have a display, uh, an extensive display, of African-American writers who are award winners. Uh, Current ones or? Over, Past over. and current. Okay. Um, for example, one that a lot of people don't know, a lot of people know that Maya Angelou right. was a reader um, for a presidential inauguration. But many people don't know that the first African-American writer to do that was Phyllis Wheatley oh, okay. for President George Washington. Wow. So. Little tidbits like that will be a part of the program. Uh, readings from members of the club where they will do passages from their favorite author, whatever it is, be yeah. it a poem or something else. Um, that's a part of the day, too. That'll special be a lot of fun. Feature, yeah. Special feature is the library will be set up where you can get your library card. Very good, yeah. Um, and a lot of people confuse the library here in right. the village yes. with the library that's the county library mm -hmm. system for yeah. all cities. So we'll work to clarify some of that confusion as now, well. Now, we have books so that people can check out then and there? Absolutely. Wow. We will That'll have an nice. extensive display of books many of them will be available for checkout. Very good, that'll yeah. make it very convenient. Yeah, so. So how did you set this all up? Is this something that the library does every year or are you folks initiated? Actually, I initiated it because um, April is usually the month that we focus, we as the larger community, focus on education. Okay. And we focus on literature. Okay. Usually if there's to be uh, an author's luncheon mm -hmm. for different book clubs and groups. It's done in April. Okay. Um, with the African American Heritage Club, we have a motto of um, acknowledging, uh, celebrating, and educating mm -hmm. people about our culture. Right. So this is but one other way of doing that. Yeah, that's really good. I think yeah. that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And just making it convenient for people, because right Absolutely. here, of course, the city is has their little branch library, so to speak, and I know they're working on expanding it as much as they can. We but, are indeed. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to get to any of the main branches from Absolutely. here. Absolutely. So that'll be nice. And it's, it's um, hard also, and not as known as it should be, that if you do something with the county library, any one of them, mm -hmm. you are associating with all of them. Right. So yes. if there's something you want and it's not there in the Laguna yeah. Woods library, they can access it for yes. you from any of the other libraries. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really good. I and I'm a former... Uh, um, are you a librarian? In, in, no, not at all. but. In the 90s, I was the representative of libraries for the county. Really? With the state. So, wow. yeah, I have a little bit of working knowledge yeah, of that's how great. the library functions. So, when is this going to take place again? This will be Saturday, April 20th, okay. from 3 to 5. And you can come, listen to the background music, reminisce of the old coffee houses. <laughs> uh, and the poetry jams that yeah. took place there and that'll be a lot of fun have a little snack and do a little reading yeah very good i think that's really nice that you're doing that 
Thank yeah, you. That's great because to get out, as I said, to get to the library, that's hard, but you're also focusing on, on authors that people may not know about or maybe they, they do a little bit but not that extensive. Exactly. So I think that's great. And it's open to everybody. Yes. We want as many people as are interested to show up. All right. So make sure you do that. And we'll make sure to mention it again uh, next week so people are reminded of it. Thank you very much. All right. Fran, always good to see you. Good to see you as you well. You take care. Thank and you. We'll be right back. Are your hearing aids not working as well as you'd like? The person who programs your hearing aids is way more important than how much you spent on them. The good news is that we can help. I'm a retired electronics engineer who will precisely reprogram your hearing aids to your unique hearing loss. If that doesn't give you significantly better hearing, I won't charge you a dime. You have nothing to lose and better hearing to gain. So call Hearing Remedy right now and ask for your personal better hearing appointment. Welcome to Palm Terrace Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center. We are known in the community for compassionate and professional nursing care. Once our guests enter the road to recovery, our expert rehab therapy team rolls into action. Our goal is your comfort and your health. Please feel free to call us at 949-587-9000 or stop by and enjoy a personalized tour of Palm Terrace Healthcare and Rehabilitation Center. Dr. Farman Cosmetic and Implant Dentistry is located right outside Gate 6 and has been keeping the village smiling for many years. I have really learned to love Dr. Farmer through the years, uh, almost 20 years now that she's been my dentist, and I highly recommend her to anyone here in Laguna Woods or in Orange County looking to establish a relationship with a dentist who will be there for them and take care of all of their dental needs. Near Snooty Fox Restaurant, behind Coco's. Are you looking for a better way to manage your medication? Medbox by Amerifarma has redefined the pharmacy experience. No more pill organizers and vials. When we fill your prescriptions, you get all your medications conveniently packaged by the dose and delivered to your door at no additional cost. This means no change in insurance, co-pays, or out-of-pocket expenses. Call our specialists today and discover the new way of pharmacy. Medbox by Amerifarma. Well, with me today, right now, is Chris Ramirez, and Chris is with the Christian Women's Connection, and we're going to be talking about uh, some events coming up, and uh, it's going to focus on these hats here. Good <laughs> to see right, you, Chris. That's right. Thank you. So Good to be here. So tell me about this. Well, this, this is, is going to be a lot of fun. It is going to be a lot of fun, and I came with my prop, so I, I'm going to put on my... I have to look it up myself, my Hello Sunshine hat here, just to get in the, the spirit of things. There but, you go. Yes, we're, we're going to be doing, uh, focusing on a little Easter hat parade and we're going to have a contest. We're encouraging all of our attendees and guests to wear their hat. Mm -hmm. I know not everybody's comfortable with that and if you're not, please, you come anyway. But there will be some that are and we're going to have a little contest and we're going to have four special categories. Uh, one's going to be the largest, one's going to be the that's most... Gonna be a, that's going to be a fun one. <laughs> that would be. I can imagine what people are going to be wearing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, we had a speaker once who came in with a hat about out to here, and it was a big pink chiffon thing, and that was a, that was fun to see. Yeah. But this is your time to get creative, gals, and we also have uh, let's see the largest, the most elegant, uh, whimsical or funny, and then colorful. So I decided to wear my my kind of my Easter egg mm -hmm. dye look here on my top today too, just to kind of go with the, the spirit of the Easter feel. But it's it's going to be a fun venue and coming together with the hat contest, which is something a little different this month yeah. in particular. And uh, this is next week, by the way, yes. on April 16th. Uh, as far as people want to attend, do they need to be members? Oh, no, not at all. This, okay. this group is open to anyone from, of any background. Uh, on the flyer, which you'll see here, mm -hmm. it does indicate uh, Laguna Woods Village residents and their guests. If you uh, have never been, we always have a little uh, information article in the globe mm -hmm. um, and there are 
numbers that you can call or email to make a reservation. We do like to get those in right. really by today. Yeah. Um, but every luncheon is, is just a fun opportunity of ladies uh, meeting other ladies and many of whom do live and supposedly are, are living in this community and or their friends. Um, we have uh, a lovely catered buffet luncheon every month and um, I'm just one of those I've gotten to where I'm really I look forward to Thomas's catering buffet and I'm sure yeah. it's going to be wonderful again this month. But again if you haven't been aware of our group um, I'm glad and hopefully you'd be inclined or interested to come and join us, especially with our extra little activities yeah, going fun. on. So, And uh, I want to give, um, you know, there are a couple numbers. Yes. And I'll, I'll give um, a couple of them here. Uh, Joe Herendine yes. in 949-939-2431 or Wendy Liu at 949-546-5859. But you would prefer an email at lewendy99 and that's liuwendy99 at gmail.com. This information is on the website as well, right? It is, yes. Yeah. Um, again, today we try to cut cut things off today, yeah. but if something changes and you think about it over the weekend and kind of, oh, I wanted to make a reservation, let us know by Monday, absolutely. And we do take walk-ins as well. Okay. So, I mean, we never turn anybody away. And the reason we, is because you're having a luncheon, yes. they, the caterer needs to know. Absolutely. have to have a little bit of a head count going there. Right. So, uh -huh. Now, as far as uh, these meetings go, you have them usually once a month, am I right? They're once a month. They're the third Tuesday. Okay. Always at the same place, which is Clubhouse 7, Gate 16 across mm -hmm. from the 19th restaurant. Very good. So this will be a lot of fun. It will be. Get your hats going. That's right. That's and right. Uh, can men wear hats too? Well, men can always wear hats. Yes. yes. Wear <laughs> Especially in this day yeah. and age. But in addition to our <laughs> luncheons too, we also have some other opportunities. Uh, when ladies come, then they find out that we have some other places that they can meet. Mm -hmm. We do have, uh, we conduct a couple of Bible studies. And again, if you're somebody who's already affiliated with the Bible study, there's there's no expectation either way. We have okay. we have ladies that come that are brand new uh, at spending time and, and studying the Bible, and we have gals who have been doing it for a long time. We have a couple of great teachers. Our chair, LaRoyce, is hosting one in her home, and then we have another lady who has been doing it for quite a while, and she's got a, a, a really nice teaching background, and we meet in a home, again, here in the Laguna Woods Village. And we will be starting a new Bible study topic uh, the 1st of May. Okay. So for the next couple of Wednesdays, there's a break from this normal indication here at Valerie's. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just this little Easter break right now. But then we'll be starting up again May 1st. But if you want to talk to somebody, Valerie is usually at the luncheon. So she could be talked to there or anybody in, in leadership or by calling this number. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. So it should be a lot of fun. It will be. It and sure are you going to uh, bring that hat or are you going to do others? I think this is the hat I'm doing this time. Okay. I, I'm a hat person. I do enjoy hats, and uh, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of in a couple of different places right now, so I don't always have my my backup section always right. traveling with me, but yeah, I do. All right, this is the <laughs> season for hats, right? It is, it truly is. Good to see you, Chris. You take Thank care. Thank you so much, and we hope to see some new people at our luncheon. Yeah, next time. Tuesday, and that is April 16th, 1145 at Clubhouse 7. That's right. We'll be right back. Okay, great. <laughs> know with certainty that starting screening mammograms at age 40 and repeating them there and repeating them yearly has the potential to save thousands of lives every year. In patients with no risk factors, they should start annual mammography at age 40. The Society of Breast Imaging, the American College of Radiology, the American College of OBGYN. Okay. Their guidelines are that an average risk woman 
begins screening mammogram at age 40. Right now it's a very confusing time not only for patients but for providers because multiple different organizations are making different recommendations. Right now it seems as though the most general gist is, is, is women should start screening in their 50s if they're at average risk. But a lot of women are not average risk. They've delayed childbearing, you know, till they're later in life. So that places them at increased risk. Or they've had biopsies that, you know, show atypia, they have family history. So if they're not at risk, they really should start screening earlier on, like at age 40. Women should begin their annual mammograms starting at the age of 40. Well, early detection is key. And um, we recommend at breast length to get mammograms starting at age 40 for patients without significant risk factors for breast cancer, which is in line with the American College of Radiology, Society of Breast Imaging, the Mayo Clinic, and the American Council for uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology. There's so many controversies, and women are so confused. Even the doctors are confused. The biggest one that comes out right now is this 40 not 50 uh, argument. The government committee is telling women to start mammograms at age 50. We know starting at age 40 saves thousands of lives, and yet... When you travel with AAA, you get more than a vacation. You get exclusive AAA member benefits, special offers on unforgettable experiences, and the travel planning knowledge of your own AAA travel agent. When you travel with AAA, you get the vacation of your dreams. To save on a pleasant holidays vacation, visit your local AAA travel agent today. Coming up today is Mortal Engines. This is an action adventure fantasy and it came out last year. And it takes place in a post apocalyptic world where cities ride on wheels and consume each other to survive. Two people meet in London to try and stop a conspiracy. A mysterious young woman emerges as the only one who can stop a giant predator city on wheels, devouring everything in its path. And going after uh, this guy as well. This uh, movie sort of like combines um, the movie Mad Max and sort of has a pirates type thing and Jules Verne look to it. Uh, very, um, obviously a very action adventure movie. Lots of special effects in this. And as I said, it came out last year. It runs two hours and eight minutes. And that will be on today at two o'clock and also at seven o'clock. Now our movie coming up on Monday is a classic musical that came out back in 1954, and it is Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. This is, of course, is a, uh, a musical, and the movie takes place in the 1950s, where a pretty young cook marries a grizzled woodsman. The cook is played by Jane Powell, and the woodsman is played by Howard Keel. And after a brief courtship, uh, they get married. When the two return to Adam's farm, Millie is shocked to meet his six ill-mannered brothers, all of whom are living in one cabin. She promptly begins teaching the brothers proper behavior, and most importantly, how to court women. But after the brothers kidnap six local girls during a town bar barn raising, a group of indigent villagers tries to track them down. Uh, again, starring Jane Powell, Howard Keel, and of course, it's got all the, uh, the music. I, don't, I forget who, I don't know if this is Rodgers and Hammerstein. I forget who wrote the music in this. No, uh, Johnny Mercer, as a matter of fact, uh, wrote the music in this. So this will be on Monday at 2 o'clock and at 7 o'clock. So that should be a lot of fun. If you, I know a lot of you probably remember that uh, movie pretty well. And um, I, re I said the other day, I remember Howard Keel only from um, Dallas, the Dallas TV series. He was uh, part of that for a long time. And then I heard he was actually in musical films, and I didn't even realize that. All right, we got some uh, great weather going today. A beautiful spring weather. 
really all the way going into next week. It'll be a little bit cooler on Monday and Tuesday, a bit more of those morning clouds coming in. But other than that, just absolutely wonderful. As I uh, were saying earlier, that at least for this area, uh, that during the week there was going to be a little bit of rain, then partly cloudy. Well, both of that not in the forecast at all. We could get a little clouds as we get in this evening, but overall not much at all. And then going into next week, I mentioned that probably midweek, we're going to see of next week another round of um, Santa Ana winds coming up and the temperatures uh, rising. Around the state this weekend, everywhere you go is just absolutely beautiful. A little bit more clouds as you get to the north coast in the Bay Area, which is perfectly normal for this time of the year. But uh, down this way in Southern California, in the Central Coast, it's going to be just beautiful, sunny and mild. And uh, even going up to the Sierras, uh, pretty mild weather for this time of the year, going to the mid-50s and mostly sunny. So fantastic weather. And um, also I want to mention that the wonderful Easter event that's happening over at uh, the Equestrian Center, this will be actually on Saturday of uh, next week and it's going to be a lot of fun. It always is. Uh, this is uh, one of those events that they get a lot of people there. An Easter egg hunt for different ages and you can see the age range there and the time they're going to have this. The horses have Easter bonnets on. They've got a lot of activities. They've got food and it's just going to be a great time and uh, you know it's uh, all there for you to go and enjoy. So that will be Saturday, April 20th. So that is, of course, the day before Easter, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And just head on over there. If you want some information, you can call the Recreation Department. That's going to be a lot of fun, though. Also want to remind you that uh, the wonderful Art Affair is coming up uh, a week later on Saturday, April 27th. But if you are interested in wanting to be a part of that and getting a booth, you need to do that now because space is limited. A booth space is um, only ten dollars but if you want to be a part of this over at clubhouse four you need to give them a call at 597-4291 or you can email recreation at vmsinc.org for that uh, for to get more information this is always uh, a good event but those booths uh, go out really quick so if you want a booth have some artwork out there and it's your chance to uh, sell this artwork and show it off do that now because it's only a couple weeks away and it sells out, or I should say the booths go very quickly. All right, we will see you on Monday. You take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.